This quick video is to show my students how to use a TA-84 calculator or TI-83 or some, some similar calculator uh, to solve some problems using uh, the store button. We're going to store numbers into the calculator. And um, I usually introduce this when we talk about gravity because the numbers are so large. So, for example, if we have the Earth here, the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth, and these numbers are given, and we can look those up in a, in a table. Uh, what is the acceleration of a mass, little m, as it falls towards Earth? And assume that the height is small, something like 10 meters, or really anything under 10,000 meters would be, would be small compared to the radius of the Earth. But let's say it's really close to the Earth, like, like 10 meters. So we're first of all given the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. And because we know that those numbers are required in our calculations, we will um, put those in. So you, you don't have to do this. You can type these numbers out, uh, but it's just really helpful if you, if you have a, a calculator that you can, you can store the numbers as variables. For example, uh, this number here I'm going to store as the letter M. So the first thing to do is to type in the number 5.98. And then a lot of my students type in times 10 raised to the 24th power. But the best way to do this is with scientific notation, which is the double E button. So second comma gets us the, the little E. Now this is not this is not this E. This is not the the base of the natural log. This is uh, E shorthand notation for scientific notation. So and then we just type in into here the power, which is 24. Okay. And we can store this by pressing the STO button, STO. Okay. Now we want to store this into some variable, and because it's going to be the mass uh, of the Earth, uh, we, we can use the letter M. Unfortunately, you can only use one letter, so that's the, the little green M here. So I press the green button, the alpha button, which changes the icon to a blinking A for alpha, and then I press the little M here, which is over the division symbol. If I hit enter, that gives me M. Now M is stored, and if I want to, I can just alpha M, hit enter, and it goes, it just tells me, you know, just gives me what M is again. If I want to do 2 times M, 2 times M, that would be twice, twice M, and of course, I don't need to do that because it's a variable. I can do alpha M, like so, and it gives me the same value, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing here for the radius of the Earth. Again, we can look this up in a table. And I'm going to store 6.37 times 10 to the 6. I'm going to store that as R, which is here over the multiplication. And so now M and R are stored in our calculator. And even if I turn it off and turn it back on again, I can redisplay it like that. As long as your internal battery is is alive and well, then, then those numbers will be stored. Okay. So we set this up. This is it's a Newton's second law problem. The sum of the forces is equal to MA. We're looking for the acceleration of the falling mass. So this little M here is the mass that's falling that do, is doing the acceleration. And gravity is uh, the universal Law of gravity is G M1 M2 over R squared, where M1 is the mass of the Earth and M2 is my little mass. R squared is the distance between them. Okay, and because H is so small, the radius of the Earth is so much bigger than H, then we can assume and approximate that that R, the distance between the two objects, is simply the radius of the Earth. And for for small H, that's a good that's a good number. G as you see here in the equation sheet, is a very small number. It's a constant, gravitational constant, and I'm going to type that in and store that as g. 6.673 e minus, and notice it's the, oops, sorry, it's the minus sign here. It's the negative rather than the minus. It's negative, so negative 11. So this is the thing you want. You hit store and then alpha g and g is stored over the tangent button. 
So now I have all of my players. Let's take a look at the calculus, so the math. Okay. And so the acceleration is going to equal this from Newton's second law. The two masses, the little mass of the thing that's falling, cancels out. And I'm left with this equation here, which we can use our calculator. So this is just g, so second g, times the mass of the earth, m, divided by r squared. Now isn't that a lot easier than typing in all the numbers? Okay, and it turns out that when you do the calculation, you get close to 9.80, which is what it is here in Newtown, Pennsylvania. This radius that we're using here is the mean radius, is the average radius of the Earth, and that, that's not exactly what the radius is here um, at, at, in, in uh, Newtown where we are, but it's close enough. Okay, so let's continue uh, with another example, and let's see what happens, what happens if the acceleration of gravity but what does the acceleration of gravity do um, uh, or at the position of the International Space Station here in April 2020? Okay, and so if we flip over to one of my favorite all-time websites here, it's called heavensabove.com, and you can search on that for the height of the International Space Station. It shows over the last year what the space station height did, and you can see it's, it falls to the Earth and then it adds more energy. It falls to the Earth and adds more energy uh, to rocket thrusts. But anyway, this is April, you know, the middle of April in 2020, and I'm just going to assume it's around 120, 120 uh, kilometers. So 120 kilometers tells us that the height above Earth is 4.2 times 10 to the 5 meters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and store that in another variable called h. So what is it? 4.2 times 10 to the 5. And we're going to store that in a variable called h. Okay, all right. And now if we look to see what the gravity is way out here at this orbit, some height h above the earth, we have the same equation that we had before, except now the radius is not the radius of the earth, it's the radius of the earth plus the height above the earth. So we have this equation. And I just want to show that with the calculation, with the calculator, it's so much easier. So alpha g, alpha m, divided by and then the radius of the Earth is R plus H. And we're going to square that guy. And so we see when we plug in the altitude of the International Space Station, we get the acceleration is 8.655 meters per second squared, which is less than 9.80, but it's certainly not 0G, as NASA likes to call it, or then they change their tune to microgravity. This is certainly not itty-bitty gravity. It's almost all of gravity, um, which irritates me that they call it microgravity or uh, whatever, or weightlessness. It's just you're in free fall. You're, you're falling around the Earth, and that is what the acceleration of gravity is as the space station travels around around the planet. Okay. And then finally, what would happen if we wanted to see what the what the acceleration of the moon was? Well, we can go back to our equation sheet. Okay. And we can scroll down here. And if we look at the moon's mass, all right, we can re-enter what m is. So we can, for example, do 7.36 times 10 to the 22nd. Oop. We can store that again as m. So you can rewrite over these variables. And then the mean radius of the moon is 1.74 e6. Okay, and we can store that rewriting over r. All right, and now we can just go back and we can take a look at all of our past equations. And now if we hit this guy, 
we can see that this is the acceleration of, it, of gravity near the moon's surface. So just a little handy tutorial on how to use um, the variables and how to store variables into your calculator, especially when using numbers that are astronomically big.